In this online lecture, we're going to discuss J values or coupling constants. And let's talk about our key points. What are we trying to get out of all of this? Our first key point, what we're going to see through this lecture is that coupling constants or J values measure the distance between split peaks in Hertz. We're also going to see, too, that coupling constants are not dependent on the field strength or the operating frequency of the spectrometer. That means no matter how powerful our spectrometer is or what model it is, coupling constants are always going to be the same across many spectrometers. And the third thing we're going to see here is that coupling constants are useful in analyzing complex NMR spectra because protons on adjacent carbons can be identified by their identical coupling constants. So three, we're going to see how it helps us determine structure of molecules. So let's look at an example here. If you were to throw this molecule in the NMR, this is the spectra that you would see in the lower right. This would, let's call this the A peak, and this right here would be the B peak. And remember what we've learned so far, the reason why they're split that way is because for the A hydrogen, if we're trying to find out how he split, remember his N value equals three because he has three neighboring B hydrogens. So with n equal to 3, the n plus 1 rule will say that the a should be split into a 4 quartet. And sure enough, he is. Same thing for the b hydrogen here. The analysis is that his n value is equal to 2 because there's two a hydrogens that are his neighbors. n equals 2. So of course, n plus 1 equals 3. And that's why the b hydrogen is split into a triplet. But now let's get into the main topic of this lecture right here. Let's take our spectrum um, that we have here in the lower right. Let's move him over here, and then let's get a blow-up picture of him. Let's look literally close. What we're able to do on the NMR, we can actually measure the length or distance between split peaks like this. The distance between those peaks is called the J value. And the distance is not measured in meters. The distance is actually measured in hertz. So we can say that those peaks are a certain number of hertz apart from each other. And we can also label this J value as what's called the JAB value. This is simply interpreted as the distance between the split peaks of the A hydrogen due to the B hydrogen splitting him, hence JAB. But here's the most important point of this online lecture, is that the distance, the J value between those peaks, is the same as the distance between these peaks as well for the B hydrogen. Using the terminology, we would call these the JBA peaks. Again, that's the distance of the peak split for the B hydrogens due to the A hydrogen splitting him. So this is what it's all about, this fact that JAB simply equals JBA. In other words, if two hydrogens are next door to each other and each hydrogen splits each other, the distance between those split peaks will be equal. Why do we care about such a thing? Well, one of the things that we would use this for, remember, the whole point of NMR is to help us get structure, is that if we measure the distance between peaks and we see two signals that have the same J values, then that means that those hydrogens must be next door to each other, or in other words, on adjacent carbons. That can sometimes be valuable information when we're trying to determine structure. It means we have another thing that we can match up to see if our structure is the structure we think it is. This enables us to go beyond the four aspects of HNMR. And by the way, the distances between the peaks are true for all of the peaks, meaning the distance here would equal the distance here, which would also equal the distance here as well. So we can be very sure by this information if these two hydrogens are next to each other on the molecule. But there's something else we can use J values for. Let's look at this example right here. Look at these two molecules. Notice they have the same number of atoms. They got the same connections here. 
but one of them is trans in the sense that the F and the BR are trans and the Hs are trans to each other, whereas this molecule is the cis version. Remember, in organic chemistry, these are two different molecules. If we wanted to use the H and MR to distinguish these molecules, watch what happens. We might run into a difficult problem here. And let me show you what I mean by that. For instance, let's label the first hydrogen right here for the trans. Let's call him the A hydrogen. And let's call the other hydrogen over here the B hydrogen. And let's do the same thing for the molecule on the right, the cis. Let's call him the A hydrogen and let's call him the B hydrogen. So right here at this point, both molecules would have two signals in their H and MR. So we couldn't use that aspect to distinguish these two molecules. And of course, one would be more shifted than the other because one of them is closer to the fluorine than the other. So the shifting shouldn't be very much different between these two molecules. And of course, if we consider the third aspect of NMR, integration, both A and B hydrogens would code for one hydrogen. So the integrations would be the same for both of these molecules on the HNMR. But what about the splitting here? Let's look at the A hydrogen first. Let's determine his N value. Remember, he only has one neighbor. That's the B hydrogen right here. So his N value would equal one. And using the N plus one rule, that means N plus one is two. He should appear as a doublet. Let's do the same thing for the B hydrogen. Let's calculate his N value. He only has one neighbor, and that, of course, is the A hydrogen right here. Therefore, his N value equals 1. And using the N plus 1 rule, we get N plus 1 equals 2. So he would also appear as a doublet. So for the trans molecule, we should see two doublets in our HNMR spectrum, which means it would look something like this. Let's put it underneath here. This would be a rough sketch of the HNMR. There we see two doublets corresponding to both the A and B hydrogens. But let's do the same analysis now on the cis and see if we get anything different. For the A hydrogen on the cis molecule, calculating his N value, he only has one neighbor as well, the B hydrogen. So N equals one. The N plus one rule would say that N plus one is two. So the A hydrogen for cis should appear as a doublet on the spectrum. And evaluating the B hydrogen for the cis, his N value, he also only has one neighbor. That's the A hydrogen as his neighbor. So his N value equals one as well, which means, uh-oh, N plus one equals two. That means he's also gonna be a doublet. So again, if we look at the HNMR, a rough sketch of it, we should also see two doublets in his HNMR. We just went through the four aspects of NMR, and it seems as if NMR wouldn't help us distinguish between these two different molecules. However, that's where J values come into the picture. J values can help us distinguish between these two. What we've learned so far about the J values, remember it's the distance between the peaks. So let's say we measure the distance between these two peaks for the trans molecule. And let's label them appropriately. These would be the J, A, B distances. And we've learned previously that the distance between these two peaks are the same. And let's label that J value appropriately. This would be the J, B, A value. And remember, we measure J values in hertz. And if you use that scale, you would actually see that the J value for A, B, and therefore B, A as well, happens to be 15 hertz. This we're gonna see in a second is actually a constant. But let's do the same analysis for our cis molecule. Again, if we measure the distance between these two peaks right here, that would be the JAB value, and the distance between these two peaks should be the same. That would be the JBA value. But here's the difference. When you measure those values, the J for the cis molecule ends up being 10 hertz. Notice there's our difference right there. This is what we can use to distinguish these two molecules. So here's the point that I'm trying to get across. If you have a trans double bond, if two hydrogens happen to be trans to each other, of course, they're going to split each other's peak. But the split is a constant. The distance between those peaks doesn't vary. 
it's always going to be around 15 hertz. And the same idea for the cis. If you have two cis hydrogens, they will split each other into doublets, and the distance between those peaks always a constant. J ends up equaling 10 hertz. So we can use this information to figure out if our molecule, if it has a double bond, if the double bond happens to be trans or cis. Again, this is going beyond the four aspects of NMR. These are obviously harder NMR structure problems. But again, remember, we're after mastery here. But I'd also like you to know that these J values are not just limited to distinguishing cis and trans double bonds. Look at this chart right here. Notice the first row right here. Let's say you have two adjacent hydrogens, HA next to HB. Notice there's not a double bond between those carbons. A would split the B hydrogen and B would split the A hydrogen. And in this case, these hydrogens are typical alkane hydrogens. For alkane hydrogens, when their signals are split, their J values are roughly seven which means if we see some splitted peaks on an HNMR and we measure the J values and we get seven as a value, that's telling us that those are likely alkane type hydrogens. Again, that might be valuable information for us trying to figure out structure. Notice the next row here in the table. We saw before that the HA hydrogen in this case could split the HB hydrogen and vice versa. When this happens, the J values are about two. And lastly, following the concept here, if you have an HA hydrogen like this and an HB hydrogen like that over there, these are way too far apart for their signals to be split. That's why the J values would be zero, which basically means no splitting would be observed. So that's the point here. Let's go back to our key points and what have we learned here? Number one, we saw that coupling constants or J values measure the distance between split peaks in hertz. We saw that coupling constants are not dependent on field strength or operating frequency of the spectrometer. That basically means that J values are constant and that's great for us. And number three here, coupling constants are useful in analyzing complex NMR spectra because protons on adjacent carbons can be identified by their identical coupling constants. Again, these help us go beyond the four aspects of HNMR if we have to.